Hey, it's Friday and we are on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. All right, Jim, let's begin with that jobs number, losing 33,000. Right, but I mean, I think the key thing here when it comes to interest rates is that uh, average hourly work mm. uh, up a little bit. My friend Matt and writing partner, Matt Horween, and I always commented out just any little bit of, uh, of increase in that at all, which is such a shame because people don't make that much money in the country, um, is enough to be able to trigger a rate hike. Now, what we care about with a rate hike is obviously that just adds usually the bottom line of a J.P. Morgan, of a Bank of America, to, of a Wells Fargo, of a city. So, I mean, you're going to get that upward move. I would prefer the upward move come from better business, not from higher wages, because I, I, you know, I don't want I don't want a rate hike just because somebody's making 15 cent more. But you know what? The group is this market is being led by the financials, and that's okay with me. And we'll get those earnings next week from J.P. Morgan and yeah, others. I, look, they've got to be blowout now. That's the problem because J.P. Morgan, they're beginning to get priced earnings multiples of average stocks like they used to before the crash. And uh, that's important that they maintain that momentum. I am seeing uh, a little too much momentum in the market entirely here. The S&P 500, uh, the S&P oscillator that I follow, that I pay for, was up plus five last night. That's the level where I historically have had to get a little more cautious. So I'm just going to go with my uh, long-term, since 1986, belief in that S&P oscillator and say, listen, I'm a little more cautious. The market's finally overbought, hasn't been overbought the whole time Trump's been president. It's the most overbought. Interesting. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Costco shares getting hit, even though the numbers were good, as you write in real money. Yeah, now Costco's a zeitgeist story. I mean, on the one hand, Costco put up the best numbers uh, of almost any retail. On the other hand, uh, people are talking about the idea that perhaps uh, the eight, the uh, number of people who go a little bit less, uh, aging of the Costco member, millennials not re-upping. Um, it's really the subtext of it is, is that Amazon Whole Foods is going to get these guys versus Costco saying, what are you talking about? We're doing great. Is there anything Costco to do, can do to take on Amazon? Well, I don't. I think they're doing everything. I mean, Costco's doing great. So, I mean, do they have to? You know, that's that's really the subtext of the piece that I wrote, which is that they're doing great. So, I mean, what more can they do if they're doing great? They're winning. But it doesn't matter because we're in a world where you won't pay 25 times earnings, and that's the essence mm. of the piece for a company that that uh, Amazon's going after. Meanwhile, Jeffrey's cutting estimates at Disney over that streaming network. Yeah, well, and they also just say that the movie schedule is going to be tough, and they have to do re they have to do investment in the streaming network. Um, that is a, a number that's below street average. The stock's been hanging at 100. I've always taken a long-term view about Disney that they'll figure it out. And, and Netflix raising prices, maybe that's good for Disney in the long term. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that's the case because then that gives you a a, a, a level that you can buy uh, of a. a well, let's say a nine ninety nine offering from Disney because you've been conditioned to buy a nine ninety nine offering from Netflix. I, I you know, I, it, it, that's kind of neither here nor there. If you like the programming that Disney's going to offer for sports for ESPN, you'll pay, and if you don't, you won't. Meanwhile, Kraft Heinz upgraded at Piper Jaffrey. Yeah, that's a worrisome upgrade because what it says is that they're ready to do an accretive acquisition. Of course, they've been ready since the stock was at 97. It's down in the 70s. What, what's happened there is is, is that uh, the sh incredible shrinking multiple of the pantry stocks, uh, and that really got underway when General Mills reported such a disappointing quarter. Are, are there any companies you think Kraft Heinz should focus on in terms of acquisitions? I, I, I think the problem is is that there aren't any that I think uh, want to be for sale. Maybe I mentioned Pinnacle Foods on the show, but uh, on Squawk the street but one of the things that that Kraft Heinz has to do is it can't do hostile mm. uh, because one of the investors is Warren Buffett and he has already told them no host no hostile deals meanwhile Nvidia shares uh, at one point this morning it, hitting 180 it, it, it can't get through that level um, because it's just being recommended over and over again on the same things uh, you know, there's an uh, outfit, I don't want to confuse it, it was an IPO that came public today, Switch, but there's a game, Nintendo Switch, and they're going to be shipping 20 million uh, units, and that's an NVIDIA product, and I would love to see numbers bumped off of the Switch, I, but I'm not seeing numbers bumped, I'm just seeing the same kind of re-it-buy, re-it-buy, it's a strong situation, and that's not enough to really move the needle. And you really want investors to know what NVIDIA is. Yeah, well, I mean, I just find that one, there's two things that are going on that worry me. One is, is that a lot of people don't know what a Shopify is or an NVIDIA is. But second, they say, well, you know what? If I, I, I don't want to, I have single stock risk if I don't know what one is. So I'll buy a basket of stocks. I'll buy the FANG basket, and then I don't know what any of them do, and yet I, I'll do, uh, it's safer. I, know what you own, please. Just know what you own. And if you don't know what it is, then sell it.
That's good advice. Meanwhile, uh, Bristol Miles or Myers has a note uh, from UBS this morning. Right. The UBS note is basically that for all the sturm and drang about maybe that Updevo's not as good as uh, as some of the dr the other drugs out there, particularly the Merck drug. Uh, you, you know, you really, Keith Trude has been, I think, the star. Merck hasn't done anything during this period. Bristol Myers is up a lot, but they're basically justifying the move of Bristol Myers, saying, listen, it, it's real. It's based on the fact that Updevo still got a lot of great markets that it dominates in. I didn't like that kind of upgrade, but you could say, well, Jim, why? You know, you've been in Lilly for action alerts and you've let that one go up on nothing new. And that's, you could argue that that's true. But we think that Lilly's a remote, we think that Lilly. Uh, has a lot in the pipeline. Bristol Myers does not, but people are always going to buy Bristol Myers. <laughs> All right, Jim, shifting gears now, there's word that AOL could be ending instant messenger. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I mean, you know, this acquisition, Verizon acquisition of AOL, Yahoo, it's just really not doing anything. I, I used to be on instant messenger, the trading desk. I used to be on instant messenger. I, I got rid of AOL. Um, it, I got rid of AOL because every time, no matter what I did, I was hacked. Um, and I just literally got rid of it because I, everybody was telling me, you know, I was always getting uh, emails from people saying, Jim, I got an email from spam from your account. And I used to use Instant Messenger, but they, the, the security of AOL was nil in the end. Uh, and then we saw Yahoo. We had that huge breach there. Uh, these, are da these are damaged assets. I would like to go in there and help t uh, Tim Armstrong run them because I've got some ideas. But frankly, I... Uh, the instant message I had by, I, I used to use an Eagles, everyone knew I had an Eagles little <laughs> box around it, but uh, I just got tired of finding that people had gotten uh, spam from me yeah. uh, because someone had hacked me, so I had to close my AOL account. Uh, speaking of the Eagles, Jim, big game this Sunday against the Cardinals. Every game's big from <laughs> now on, right? I mean, you know, look, I these are no gimmies because I was there when Fitzgerald tw uh, torched us. I do like uh, I, I like Wendell Smallwood. He will not be playing. Uh, I was going to wear my Fletcher Cox '91 jersey. I may do it anyway, but he's not playing. Uh, I have uh, no Eagles in fantasy this weekend. I did pick up Clement on the waiver wire because I think that he was great in Wisconsin. People, he was overshadowed by Melvin Gordon. Um, I'll be watching to see the Giants versus the Chargers. I, you know, someone's going to have to win a game there. Uh, last night I felt so bad for Nick Folk because he did lose the game, uh, that would have been a Tampa Bay win, I think. Uh, New England is very vulnerable. I continue to think that Kansas City uh, is the best in the A, and I think that Atlanta is the best in the N. Uh, Atlanta will be without both Sanu and JJ, so I don't know. Uh, uh, they've got by come. Look, here's the problem I see with the NFL. Uh, and by the way, Bob uh, Sands, Rob Sands last time for Constellation, he says it's still worth advertising. There, there is such parity this year that I just never even know. I mean, like, Seattle, not that great. New England, not that great. I mean, Giants, not that great. Cowboys, very vulnerable against Green Bay coming into Dallas. I just saw Emmett Smith. When the Cowboys retire, I like them. It's hilarious. I mean, I, uh, I, I text Tony Romo when he's in the booth. So anyway, it's going to be a big weekend for football, big weekend for fantasy. And uh, while we're at it, just by the way, in terms of big weekends, we got a weekend coming up yes. at the end of October where we'll be doing a teach-in. Uh, and I think it's going to be really valuable for people who are watching this video. We are going to do have more ideas about how to make money in this market, and they will be in-depth. It will not be like, hey, I like Shopify. We're going to do technicals. We're going to do uh, what to do about ETS. We're going to talk about flow. We're going to talk about things. I'm going to have some ideas that I think that I've not talked about. We've got a lot of really great people together, and it's a special street, very, very special street product. I, I haven't done a teaching on a Saturday uh, in a decade. It was the most well-attended thing we've ever done at the street. Wow. And I really want people to think about this. Well, yeah, we'll get pictures too. We'll do Facebook, Instagram. But it is about ideas and learning. It is about actionable trades. And I think that people have to come and there'll be a lot more information if you go to the website about it. But I'm devoting my Saturday to it. You should devote your Saturday to it. Yeah, we can't wait for it, Jim. That's October 28th. Yes, thank you. It's going to be terrific. You can't miss event. All thank right, you. Jim Kramer, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much. For more information on the stocks Jim just mentioned, please head to thestreet.com.